Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, another another tick in Farm City Week here today. It's Ag Day with the Bradenton Kiwanis. I'd like to welcome everybody here. We've got the uh, the new leadership manatee group that'll be uh, introduced again by Miss Brenda Rogers here shortly. But um, thank you so much, Jay Ellis. If you'd come up and give us the invocation today. I wasn't the scheduled prayer. You were supposed to get a real cowboy today, but you'll have to, you'll have to take me. There was an emergency that came up for him. I just want to say before I start the prayer, God is intimately tied into agriculture. And despite the cultural jokes that we've all heard for years, the three oldest professions in the world are farming, ranching, and agriculture, agricultural science. Because God, the Bible tells us, tasked Adam with actually taking care, farming and ranching, and actually naming every one of the animals. He just brought him to him and said, you name them. So we want to give thanks to that God who's tied to agriculture today. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for the industry of agriculture. We thank you for the land, the livestock, all the benefits that we derive from it and from the blessing and provision of your hands. We thank you for that this Thanksgiving season reminds us that we don't make our food for ourselves. It comes from the earth, that you nurture it, you water it, you grow it, and you simply told us to be responsible, to be the caretakers. Help us be that as we love our neighbors, as we love you. We give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jay. If you'd all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Please be seated. Growing up here working on dad's farm, you know, I got a chance to, um, to really learn a lot about agriculture. Our family came from that. I, I think about all the different um, promotions and advertising that used to be out there. You probably heard things like, we always had a bumper sticker on the car that said, Florida crops are tops. Or you, you heard more recently, got milk, right? That was, how many, that was probably 10, 20 years ago, something like that. Right, Brenda? That's good, right up there with your, with your family back there. And then um, if you gripe about the farmer, don't talk with your mouth full. You know, I always, Dad always liked that one out there. But our uh, Bradenton Manatee community is uh, really blessed with great fertile land. We've got great fishing, you know, that happens out there, all kinds of good stuff. And we're, uh, we're going to find out a little bit today about just how much of an impact Manatee County does have. I'd like to go into the... Um, uh, a couple of announcements on your tables. You can see uh, Christy Haley, our chair of uh, uh, Community Service Committee, put together holiday service opportunities. This is also on member day, but if you would please um, grab one of these members or even guests, 
uh, take a look at some of these events that are coming up. And please do sign up on Member Day because we still have um, quite a few openings for ringing the bells or selling Christmas trees for uh, Boys and Girls Club and a couple others going on. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make it as far as uh, introduction of guests. Brenda will go ahead and, and make some announcements with regards to that. And Ms. Brenda Rogers, former president of the Bradenton Kiwanis and head of our Ag Committee, come on up. Good afternoon. This is my favorite day of the year. And um, I'm really happy that you chose to come and join in this celebration of agriculture in Manatee County. I um, frequently will tell people that if you eat, you're involved in agriculture. And a lot of times people don't think about the fact that they are so dependent and where the food comes from and why it's important to us in our local economy and in, in our physical health. So with that said, we're going to jump right into our program. It's packed and um, we're starting a little bit later than we thought we would. So we're just going to ask everybody to skim off a little bit and we'll get you out of here before the, the sun sets. So, <laughs> all right, so the first Farm City Week was celebrated by the Bradenton Kiwanis Club in 1955, and Judge Smith told me that, so I know it's absolutely the truth. And um, so you keep that in mind that it's a longstanding tradition for this club to um, support agriculture in lots of ways, but to celebrate agriculture on an annual basis. Manatee County Agriculture is number seven in our state. I learned that yesterday in a presentation. And um, we slid from number four in about, I don't know, two or three years time period. And um, you know what we replaced agriculture with. So we'll go ahead and um, <laughs> let me introduce some folks. So we have with us today uh, many of our agriculturalists of the year from the past. And I'm going to read their names, and then everybody else will be introduced in groups. So in 1998, it was Richard Alberg, if you would wave. And we'll hold the applause till we get everybody um, waving. And 2003 was Mr. Ralph Garrison. Over in this corner, um, Mr. James Parks in 2005. Wave. OK, thank you. In the center, there he is, OK. Uh, in 2009, it was Brenda Rogers. In 2010, it was um, Jim Strickland, right up front, okay. In 2012, it was Mr. Irvin Shannon, right down front. 2014, Mr. Buddy King. In um, 2016, Hugh Taylor. 2017, Mitchell John. 2018, Mr. John Hamilton. In 2020, Mr. Cully Rao. In 21, Cliff Coddington. In 22, Mr. Peter Voli. In 2023, DC McClure. And I would also like to recognize um, David Council and his family who were here with us today celebrating the induction of their father, Mr. Walter Council, into the Manatee County Agriculture Hall of Fame. And that presentation was made last week. So let's give them a applause. Thank you very much. So the next group that we always invite are elected officials. And um, if you are an elected official or government leadership, please um, stand up or wave or let us know where you are. Thank you for being here today. The next group is the Farm City Week Committee and um, a few guests. So if you're on the Farm City Week Committee, please indicate. So there's a whole bunch of people on the Farm City Week Committee. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And then the last introduction that I have for a group is the um, Leadership Manatee class that is currently participating in the program. So if you're in the Leadership Manatee class right now, you haven't graduated from Leadership Manatee, but you're in the class, please stand.
thank you for being here today. And I will tell you that the tour goes on wind, rain, sleet or snow or whatever, you know, the, the dress appropriately because we, we will go see agriculture tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. All right, so next I would like to introduce our, the president or chair of our Farm City Week Committee on Patty Keen Freed who's going to do a little welcome and give you some thoughts. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for recognizing Manatee County Farm City Week every year at the Bradenton Kiwanis Luncheon. I am Patty Keen Freed, and I am a proud seventh generation Manatee County native and the 2024 chair of Manatee County Farm City Week. Farm City Week celebrates the partnership between agriculture and urban communities to emphasize the importance of farming communities and raise awareness about food production's direct link to local agriculture. This year, our theme is Raising for a Reason, No Farmers, No Food. Without farmers, there will be no food, and without teaching our youth the importance of keeping local agriculture at the forefront and its, its importance to understand sustainable practices and realize how food production impacts their community and their environment. Farmers and ranchers don't just provide food, but they also help maintain green space, wildlife habitat, and freshwater recharge. We have, a, we have had a very busy week last week and continuing it this week. Our lineup started on, this, on the 9th of November where we had FFA and 4-H students down at the Bradenton Farmers Market. On Monday, November 11th, we saluted our veterans in the Veterans Day Parade and we're joined by Palmetto High FFA. Last Wednesday on November 13th, 13th, we inducted Mr. Walter Council, Council as the 2024 Ag Hall of Fame inductee. He was a lifelong Manatee County farmer and native. He was the first vice president and charter member of the Palmetto FFA chapter in 1939. He served on the Manatee County School Board from 1954 to 1966, and he was a U.S. Navy veteran of the World War II. At the luncheon, we also recognized our Manatee County School Essay Contest winners and our Manatee River Soil and Waters Conservation District essay, essay winners that became um, essay winners since the speech contest had to be converted. On Thursday, November 14th, we had our annual farm tour. This year, the tour went to McKeithen Farms, Taylor Cattle and Citrus, Blackbeard Ranch for lunch, and to Mariposa Nursery. On today, we will know who is the Agriculturist of the Year for 2024. And we want to thank the Bradenton Kiwanis for your continued support of Manatee County Farm City Week. Tomorrow we will have our Leadership Manatee class. They will have a farm tour with a pack day going to Fiorelli Winery, Dake and Dairy, Taylor Cattle and Citrus, G&D Farms, Lunch at Dry Prairie with speaker Dr. Angela Collins, Mosaic Ellington Nursery returning back to Fiorelli Winery, and then also tomorrow and Thursday, we will have our Ag Ventures where we will host approximately 1,200 third graders at the Manatee County Fairgrounds where the youth will learn about making butter, making fudge, learning about forestry, learning about entomology, and learning that their eggs, milk, and butter don't just come from Publix. <laughs> we will wrap up our two weeks of Farm City Week with our Beef Workshop and Prospect Show on Saturday, November 23rd at the Manatee County Fairgrounds where 78 youth will show their 80 animals and learn about marketing and products. Once again, I want to thank you for recognizing Manatee County Farm City Week every year. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. I'd like to draw your attention to the little brochure that's on your table. This, this is Ag Facts about Man for Manatee County and it's got some things you can use in your next trivia contest. It is really, it is interesting about what, what we grow here and what we, what's included in our agriculture um, production. If you have any questions, we have folks from the Manatee Extension Office that can um, help you. Now I'm going to ask Mr. J. Ellis to come and um, introduce our speaker and then we'll, when we come back together we will announce the agriculturalist of the year. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, brother. Pat asked me in setting him up as a speaker, he said, 
I don't want to stand up there at the podium in front of everybody. And I said, what do you want to do? He said, well, I want you to interview me. I said, okay, we can, uh, we can do that. We've done it before. So um, I'm excited. For y'all that don't know Pat Spinoza to get to know him. And uh, Pat is a new friend of mine, but he has quickly become an old friend of mine. And I'm going to tell you why. We've got connections that span literally generations. And I can vouch for him coming from good stock. First of all, we both claim Bartow as our hometown. His mom and I grew up together as kids. His grandparents and my parents have been and continue to be lifelong friends. And one more connection that's just a little fun I wanted to share with everybody, and I don't think I've laid on you yet as we've gotten to know each other, is Pat, your great, great grandfather delivered my dad in an orange grove in Polk County. <laughs> Truth. That Truth. does not surprise me one bit. <laughs> all right. With all that said, Pat, how did a small town boy from Bartow become an award winning, nationally successful podcaster who champions agriculture? Man, what a great question. And shout out, uh, Jay, by the way, and this is great. I've gotten to meet a couple of y'all. Doing stuff like what we're doing today makes me want to get up tomorrow and just work harder what we're doing. And just to kind of give everybody a, a high level how this started coming from Bartow is my previous employment at Ag America. Ag America was a, is still a financial institution that is serving farmers and ranchers all across the country in the financial space. Well, I got to meet who now is a friend of mine, a gentleman named Josh Allen. Josh Allen's the, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. And over the last four years, Josh and I, and Josh comes from a family farm in California. And over the last four years, Josh and I have seen what we think is a lifestyle that is finally getting the light that it needs to. And that's just, we're not talking about the 60 million people in rural America. We're talking about the people outside of rural America that are finally looking over their shoulders and saying, wow, it is kind of cool to wear cowboy boots or wear a cowboy hat or listen to country music. And I think 2020 during COVID helped us out a lot. I think everybody in the city kind of peeked out and said, I want to learn how to shoot a gun or catch a fish or I want to take my family and kids outside and just learn to to not stay inside and play video games. I think food right now is so important that people truly not only want to know where their food comes from, but they want to know who's growing their food. And I will say over the last 18, 24 months, that is where the success has come from, is people are now finally interested in this, what I'm calling this rural America lifestyle. That's great. All right. Talk to us a little bit about the state of agriculture and what has been the biggest change in agriculture from previous generations to now? This is, I'm going to be very opinionated, by the way. Please don't, I know if there's some recorders going on or pictures, don't hold me against all of this. But look, Jay, it's one of those things where I truly believe that we have a few issues in agriculture. And I think the, the first thing, especially here in Florida, I think everybody can agree on is land shortages. I mean, we're losing land every single day, but we're getting a thousand, more than a thousand people a day moving to the state. My biggest thing that I like to highlight, because I'm passionate about it, is, is truly youth in agriculture. I mean, if you look at the stats, there's a majority of our farmers right now are over the age of 60 years old, and it is so hard to get these kids into agriculture because we're not giving them the opportunity. I don't think, I know we talked a little bit, I don't think anybody currently in FFA is in the room. No, they didn't make it. Okay. Well, oh, like FFA and 4-H, those types of things, getting involved at, at a at a local level, whether it's Farm Bureau or a local commodity organization is so important, but the work ethic's just changed. I mean, and he's way older than me. He was acting like we were the same age when he was introduced to me, so please don't put that on me. But it's just like, I'm looking out uh, in the crowd. Age is a state of mind. There you go. It's, I don't know if we have the work ethic as a younger generation right now to work in agriculture. And I truly don't know the, the answer. I, I want to be the guy that shines light on it. But I think that has been a change, the work ethic and youth. And then technology. I mean, technology is going to continue to 
to overcome each generation. I mean, now I saw a video the other day of a robot working in the field. I mean, we all know tractors are driving itself these days, and we, we, have, to, we have to acknowledge that, but we have to understand that that's not, it, we can't do that with every single commodity. So we have to continue to get people involved in agriculture. Great. All right, Pat, flesh out a little more. Why do you champion agriculture? I mean, and what's its relevance to us Sure, you got a bunch of ag people in the room, but you've got a bunch of people that in here, too, that aren't ag people. Uh, what's its relevance to us as a county, a state, a nation? Well, I mean, I think, number one, in Florida, agriculture was the number one moneymaker in the state until tourism took over, and I don't know, y'all probably could fact check me, maybe 2008, 2009. But y'all said it before Jay and I came up here. I mean, every single day a farmer touches y'all's life. We've probably had, I mean, from breakfast to coffee to what we're eating now, those cookies look really good too. And after I get out, I'm going to get one. <laughs> but putting your clothes on, just every single day agriculture is involved in your life, and it never gets talked about. I'm not going to sit here and talk about politics. Number one, I think agriculture might be the only, if not it's the highest bipartisan thing that you should talk about. I truly don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican. Agriculture is in everybody's life. It's just not talked about enough. So I truly am passionate about it. This is I grew up in a multi-generational family farm. I'm looking around, there's familiar faces. Uh, Cliff Coddington and I were just talking about Marco Island, and hell, I grew up at Florida Cattlemen's Convention. Cliff probably knows more about me than my girlfriend knows about me, which is not a good thing, uh, watching me grow up in Marco Island. But it's one of those things that I'm passionate about, and we truly have an issue as a country if we don't continue to shine light on it. Well said. All right, let's... let's uh shift gears just a little bit and what some would call let's let's get into a sexier side of your life and business and uh tell us about the podcast and and give us some stories who's we know you interview celebrities who's who's been the most interesting who's been the least interesting who's been the most embarrassing what tell us a few stories i would say so the podcast like i mentioned earlier it came from just a hey we it seems like people are starting to get engaged in in this lifestyle which is a very good thing so how can we shine light in two ways? How can we be informative to the people that just want to educate themselves in agriculture? But how can we celebrate the people that do it every single day? And, and another opinionated statement, so please don't hold this against me. I don't know if you can get that type of stuff in mainstream media, mm -hmm. to be frank. I really don't. And you can see where I think these privately held networks like mine and Josh's or others. I mean, that was a that was a huge hit in the election this year, too, by the way. I mean, you saw a lot of the candidates now going on podcasts and going more on the mainstream media because we don't know if, if we can get the, the information that we want. So we started the podcast. Now, when it comes to the guests, we've had a full line of guests. It's so funny whether it's an athlete like a Josh Allen or a, an actor like Adrian Grenier, who was from uh, the Vinny Chase and Entourage, which is one of my favorite TV shows. Um, musicians like Riley Green or Parker McCollum or Ian Munsley, they've all come on the show. But I tell you, it's that dang little kid, Jackson, <laughs> the eight-year-old, the tractor savant, who is a great, I'm telling you, if I can, go back in time I want to be like Jackson Locks. I don't know if y'all know Jackson he's a little tractor kid just a Jackson thing he is the most brilliant individual when it comes to tractors and I love the kids so much and that's what we need more of in this country is kids like that that want to work hard that's the biggest thing I don't care if it's farming or law enforcement or um, EMT or fire, fire it's the work ethic that I truly think is the big thing that I want to continue to hit on and that Jackson kid he was the most interesting one I want to tell a quick story Lonnie Bedwell Lonnie Bedwell is a farmer out of Indiana he served our country about 9% of our farmers in this country served our country so that's a little fun stat of the day for you but Lonnie Bedwell farmer in Indiana he uh, served in the military got back he went on a hunting trip with his buddy and they went turkey hunting his buddy shot Lonnie in the face, and he was in the middle of nowhere, and his buddy hauled tail to go get help, and Lonnie was dying, and he actually could feel himself stop breathing, and he finally could grab a tree branch to shove it in his throat to open his airway, and he sat there for another 15 minutes. He finally got out totally blind, 
Last year, Lonnie Bedwell, blind guy, climbed Mount Everest. Wow. And he's the guy, you can look him up, he's done all sorts of river rides, and he's doing, is it the seven summits, is that correct? So there's Mount Everest and there's six more, so he's, he's climbing all of the summits, and uh, unbelievable story. But it's just so cool to, to get to, that's what I love doing, I love storytelling. And there's so many cool people that have come on the show that, uh, that I love to highlight their stories, and it just gets people's eyes on the word farmer. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. Tell, we didn't say at the beginning. Tell them the name of your podcast and how they can listen to it. Yeah, so the name of the podcast is Like a Farmer, and I'm, YouTube is, is uh, where you can watch the, the visual side, not that you really want to see me the whole time, but any of the audio podcasts, excuse me, audio podcasts too, that's Spotify, Apple Music, we're, we're all over the place. We are trying to work on a deal to get more distribution on TV, so Josh and I have a lot of big plans uh, in the coming years for uh, – for the media network, and that's what we're trying to do. It's not just my show. We have a few shows right now. We have a college football show. We have a cooking show. We have a hunting and fishing show. It's just kind of what I'm calling the pillars of rural America is what I want to highlight, and we're doing that through multiple shows, hoping to have 20 shows under the network by the end of 2025. Wow, that's great. What about bragging on yourself a little bit or, the, or at least the success of the podcast? What, uh, give us some numbers. How many people are listening to Pat Spinoza on a weekly basis? Oh, man, it's crazy, which is mind-blowing. I'm much appreciative of this. But right now on social media, we're running at like 11 to 12 million cell phones on a 30-day basis. And the average full watch of an episode is anywhere from like two to 300,000 people every week. So it's really cool to see. And that I want to go back to one of your questions, too. And social media is the best tool that we can use as a society, especially in the the industry of agriculture. There's a lot of people that are interested in what y'all do every single day. I'm talking to my, you know, my producers, my full-time producers. Don't be afraid to show people that because it's very informative and it just highlights what you're doing. And social media has been very successful for me. Trust me, it can be very bad too. I'm not telling you to put everything on social media. But use it as a tool because it's highlighting agriculture in a great way. I always say some of our best content creators are, are our full-time farmers and ranchers. Hmm. That's good. That's good. All right, you touched on it earlier just a little bit, how some people may view farming, ranching, ag-related industries as old-fashioned, something for the old-timers. And uh, yet you are engaging the popular culture. You're keeping it fresh in front of them. Kiwanis, along with all these people here, here today in the community, uh, is all about servicing the community and with a particular focus on the youth, kids, young people in the area. Flesh out a little more, you touched on it, but tell us, maybe give us some insight, some thoughts on what can we do as a community to get young people excited about and involved in agriculture? I think the biggest thing we can do is continue to, to help the youth get involved. And I, I, like I said, I'm not rewriting the book. I think FFA and 4-H and other organizations like that do a really good job right now. We need to continue to push our kids to do it. Let me say, we had a conversation the other day about FFA. FFA isn't just teaching our kids how to be a farmer and rancher. I'll tell you what it's teaching our kids. It's teaching the men to when they meet a lady to take their hat off. It's teaching anybody to when they shake somebody's hand to look them in their eyes. It's uh, holding the door for people. It's teaching a man. You can clap for that. I mean, that's what it's doing. It's, it's letting, it's getting them to dress for the occasion. Like, hey, if you're doing something, this is how you need to dress. Like, it's bringing the values of what I'm saying all, it's the values of our farmers and ranchers. And I even hate saying that, but I grew, I grew up from a farmer, you know, in a Dudley Putnam or my mom or somebody like that that just, hell, my mom would beat my tail if I didn't take my hat off when I walked indoors or met a lady. So I'm just calling it the values of rural America. Like, it's not something that, hey, if you're not in rural America, you don't have values. But that's the type of stuff we have got to get our kids more involved in. And then, like, the farm bureaus and the Florida... Um, Veg, fruit and Vegetable Association, and getting them involved, the activations. Look what we're doing with Like a Farmer. It's like, what are the pillars of rural America? 
it's sports, it's food, it's country music, it's hunting, it's fishing, like doing stuff around that, that just shines light on farming because every single one of those has to do with agriculture. And once you get that in everybody's head, I think we can truly get another generation back into farming. Now, what I cannot fix and what is a huge issue, I'm not in politics, I don't plan on being in politics. You gotta be able to pay them at the end of the day. It's, we're not paying them enough. I mean, we're just not. We gotta figure that part out. I'm going to say another opinionated statement. I'm sorry if I make anybody mad. Like what happened the other day um, with the workers of, in the shipyard, right? They held strike to get paid more. What if our farmers and ranchers did that? Right? We'd be starving after a few days. Like, we, don't, like, we can't do that. But we need to figure out what the the deal with, with the ship workers we're doing because they want more money and we have to figure out how to give our farmers or ranchers more money or we we're, they're irrelevant to us that's how we're looking at them and it's like dude they feed us and clothe us every day right there's two things that I want to be independent on as a country and that's my protection that's my military and local law enforcement and that's my food source I never want to have to depend on another country for my food source so we, we do need to figure that out I don't have the answers so but go out and vote because those people hopefully will figure it out. Good, good. Well said. Um, we've left it open. We've got a few minutes. Let's open it up. Questions from the audience or comments or input in any way. Steve Tinsworth. What are the options for a Florida version of uh, Yellowstone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did everybody hear that question? What are the options for a Florida version of Yellowstone? I think that's a fantastic, a fantastic question. I am going to – we have a lot. I mean, when it comes to our family farms here in Florida, we have some of the best. I'm very biased. I love that idea. I think we need to keep that open because there's so many fun families. And listen, there's drama in these families too, and we all know it. It gets me excited just talking about it. I don't know that answer. We should do that because um, what Yellowstone did do, which was good, it did bring people in this lifestyle of driving a pickup truck. I'm sure Dodge truck sales is through the roof. Country music, uh, Spotify streams, I think is up 25% year over year. And, and I, I've always pushed back to Yellowstone because people can watch it on a weekly basis and it makes people feel good. <laughs> a Florida version of Yellowstone should happen. We all know some of the families that I'm speaking of, of just complete badasses, excuse my language, but there are some drama within those families that would keep people at the edge of their seat, but I'm not gonna call out any names, but there is a play there. <laughs> All right, who else? Commissioner. Uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, Jay. My question is, the last time we had anybody in public office really to help us was President Carter, believe it or not, whether you agree with him or not. Oh, yeah. He really helped the farmers. What are we doing? Uh, how are we pushing our legislators in regards to helping the farmers, and what does that future look like? Because that's the last time that's ever happened when President Carter was in office. Are we making any efforts in order to help our farmers, incentivize them to stay farmers? Because myself, I grew up on a farm. You couldn't pay me enough to be a farmer. I know yeah. the hard work and I've seen the stress. So is there anything that you know of that, that is being pushed at the federal level to help our farm, in, in even the state level, to help our farmers here? Yeah, and I appreciate you saying e even the state level because I do think it starts there and I keep going back to Farm Bureau because Farm Bureau does do a good job when it comes to the political realm of agriculture. I think, and, and you're right about President Carter, I, I mean, I guess, was it American Farm Bureau National Cattlemen's that Trump was the first sitting president in a long time to go there? It was either American Farm Bureau or National Cattlemen's, but National So I think that we are getting better. It is a good question. I think it starts with your farming, op your, your operators right now at this level talking to local and state level. And I'm telling you, Farm Bureau has a good pipeline to do that, but it's getting them involved. Like, hey, I understand you're a full-time farmer, and that's a, that's a job. That's a 24-7 job, but you have got to be talking to your local politicians to run the, the, the poll because it's an issue. I mean, 
once again, fact check. I don't think maybe once or twice during these presidential debates that they even talked about agriculture or farming. Like, I truly don't. It's not like Farm Bill gets talked about a lot, and the Farm Bill is very, very important. So we're not doing as good a job as we should, but it continues starting to these local organizations getting it up to the top. Thank you. Henry. What, what's the effect going to be of this start shipping all the immigrants out of the country um, where before years ago many of the laborers, the workers that were U.S. citizens, because I, I came up in the industry. And um, what's the effect going to be to ship all the immigrants out of the country? That's such a good question. I'm getting scared to answer these questions now because <laughs> we're getting so political, but I love this stuff. I'm not kidding. All right, here we go. I think right off the bat when you, I mean, because there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And we're, there. it seems like from what I'm hearing, there's a lot that are going to be shipped out. So immediately, and I promise you, I'm not giving y'all any financial tips or I'm just saying immediately when you ship that many people out of the country you will have an issue with the economy I'm not saying anything like hey go and talk to your financial advisor but you will just immediately when you ship any whoever it is that many people out of a country it's going to affect the economy now in the workforce it's a great question we have to continue doing a better job with h2a and h2b and getting them ready to work because like what we were just talking about down here it almost seems like now as a society we feel like privileged to go work in agriculture at the the manual le label level and that's not a good thing if it was up to me i remember having a call with a politician i won't say his name uh during covid and he was like well it's covid let's not worry about these um uh, immigrants because we'll just have you know a US citizen go and work yeah you bet bud you think any, like we're, we're not gonna do it like these are people that we do need in our country we just have to figure it out to do the right legal way because we need them because that is the hardest type of work and like I mentioned earlier we will never have a robot picking an orange we damn sure will never have a robot riding a horse like we just won't have that I do think technology is coming it's here to stay but it will have an effect when you when you deport that many people, but I hope we continue to do a good job of keeping the ones that want to be here legally and that want to work hard because that's what that's what it is. It's hard work. I think we got time for one more. Yes, sir. Um, Eric DeSilvestro, what's the best way for a city suburbanite guy raising two kids to uh, get them in front of agriculture, get them understanding the production side of things? Because I want them to understand that piece. Yeah, that's awesome. I think uh, coming to events like this, it seems, I mean, you've got the whole fair going on this week. That type of stuff is very important. And I will tell you one thing about Florida and what they're doing a very good job is agritourism. Agritourism is at the top of these people's revenue streams now because of the commodities, which we're not going to get into and how hard it is right now to even make money as a farmer. But how these people in the state are utilizing their land for agritourism is pretty impressive, and you can go and learn a lot. So I would just be doing my research, getting the kids out to the farm, finding schools that have this type of education is very important. I'm going to very opinionated statement. Trade schools is going to be way more important one day than a college degree. I'm so sorry that I just said that. I hope y'all don't get mad at me. Um, because that type of stuff is what they need to learn how to do. So, like, education, you hold your, your, your kids' future in education, like, get them to schools that, that are teaching agriculture. County fairs. County fairs, too, yes. Yeah, thank you for that. I think we have one more right here. Are we good? We, you good? I think we, you want to take it? Yeah. We'll wrap it up. Take Sorry. one more? Okay. Uh, beyond the surf, beyond country music, the lifestyle aspect of agriculture, on the educational programs, from your experience as a podcaster in, you know, in another form of media, what else do you think resonates with younger people that your that podcasts and other like your form of media been able could probably message more on? Yeah, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. That's a good question. I, I'll go and give you the stats. I mean, some of the most engaging content that we put out is truly boots on the ground farming just like you'd be surprised there's a lot of people that don't even know what a tractor is or where their food comes from I mean and people want to know like I said I didn't start this business for the 60 million people in rural America y'all know 
about farming way more than I do. It's the people outside of it that I'm trying to shine light on it because those are your voters. Those are your people buying your product in the grocery store. Uh, direct to consumer, especially in the beef industry, is going to continue to get more popular. I'm going to tell you that right now. And a lot of beef providers are doing that because they don't want to deal with the middleman anymore. So it's just that boots on the ground type of content. Like I said, the Jackson kid was very engaging. And the partnership with other institutions, we have a great partnership with NASCAR, where every single race in NASCAR, we bring a family farming operation to that NASCAR race. So we try to do partnerships like that to get them more engaged. That's good. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. I'm going to take it. Thank you, Pat. No, thank you all so much for having me. Uh, yeah, love you all. If you got the before you guys get off stage, Pat, thank you very much. That's uh, super informative. We love what you're doing here, and we'd like to present you with the Brandon Kiwanis Golden Ruler oh, to measure the future success of Ag America and also um, what you're doing for um, you know leadership with the kids and getting them informed as to what farming's all about. Thank, thank you so much. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Very interesting program. I don't think I'm mic'd now. Let's try this one. Okay. They do that just to trip me up. Okay. Thank you, Pat. That was a very interesting um, presentation. And Jay, you're excellent at being an interviewer. Keep that in mind. We, um, before I introduce the presentation of the agriculturists of the year, I, I want to just comment a little. I've got two things I want to say about agriculture. One is, well, first I can tell you that there are a lot of opportunities to get your kids involved in agriculture through 4-H and through FFA. That we have community gardens, we have school gardens, and all of those elements feed into a child that learns to like vegetables, that, learn, that enjoys growing them, and those kinds of opportunities. So please let us know if you want to find a place for your kids in, in agriculture. We could help you uh, identify some opportunities. This. Well, I want to say this year, but for the last several years, agriculture has um, really suffered. And you know that we had three storms and a lot of people in our community suffered through that with personal loss, with, with death. I mean, it, it has been really bad in our, in our community, in our area. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that agriculture has suffered too. And um, that right now, we have very little production in the produce area because the crops were destroyed by one of the three storms. And, um, and so I think when I was a, a child, it was something my dad frequently said was, if you want to meet a gambler, introduce yourself to a, a farmer because they gamble every single season. And they do the work because they love the work not because of the high profits, but they, um, they do it because they love it. And I think that it's very special the way our community embraces and um, supports. I know that there are farmers who are still waiting on their insurance fund, crop insurance funds from Hurricane Ian, and, there, and that was, was three years ago, is that, do you see three years ago, I think? That was the one that came in at Fort Myers and went right up the middle of the state. One of the many that did that. But it's a, it's a tough area to be in. And so if you get the opportunity to buy a pepper that was grown in Manatee County instead of California, please do it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I wrote some notes. Okay. And then. I want to also mention that Commissioner Will Simpson, the Commissioner of Agriculture in Florida, is going to be a speaker here at Brainton Kiwanis in a couple of weeks. And we want 
to invite you all to come back for that um, for that speaker. I think it's December 3rd? Is that right? yes. December 3rd, thank you. Okay, all right, so now it's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Daniel West, who was inducted, sworn in last night as mayor of the city of Palmetto. And um, Mayor West is going to make a presentation of the agriculturist of the year. Testing. I think it's on this one. It's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here with you. Um, I'm Mike Renda. This is uh, one of my favorite days of the year. I love to, to, to be around when agriculture is being promoted. Um, that is for sure. As a former uh, ag student, FFA member, 4-H member, ag teacher, uh, I love it. And so I'm so glad that we can be here and celebrate it together. So I just want to say uh, a couple of things. I, I, I am so grateful that you are here today uh, for us for this, for the announcement of this award. Um, and I want to tell you, I've, I've had the pleasure and honor of, of, of announcing these in the past, but this one is a little tricky, and you're going to find out in just a few minutes. Um, so I'll just say that about it real quick. But, uh, you know, the Manatee County Agricultural Museum in Palmetto is a place that you need to visit. If you haven't, you need to do so. Um, the Ag Hall of Fame and Agricultural Star of the Year, it's a permanent exhibit there inside the um, uh, the showcase uh, showcases the men and women of our county that have made significant achievement and impacts on agriculture and our community here in Manatee County. Uh, there, I, I looked last night, I just did a virtual tour and they were just taking a look at who all was in there, just rekindling. I've been through there many times, but there are over a hundred individuals in the Ag Hall of Fame and uh, also from the uh, uh, Agricultural of the Year that are located in there. So make sure you take some time to go over, uh, see Miss Diane and her, her staff. They do a great job there at the Ag Museum. And just take some time and go through and look and see who all is in there and what contributions uh, they gave to our county. And I will tell you, when you come to this event and you learn about what people are doing out in the community, it makes you want to go home and get to work even harder. Uh, it's just as a, as a real uplifting uh, time to hear about what people are doing in their operations across the county. And uh, then it kind of gives you an idea of what, what we can do, what you can do uh, in your part of the area to, to help with youth agriculture or to help farmers out there. So uh, I better get going because I know I'm on a time constraint here. So uh, this year our selection uh, is, is somewhat unique. Um, and like I said, after visiting the Hall of Fame online and being there many times myself, um, you see that uh, there are lots of people that are inside the Ag Hall of Fame that were tomato growers. And I was going to give them some examples of different ones, some tomato growers like Dan McClure, uh, Peter Harley, Blake Wisnant, and on down the line. We've got many folks in there that are educators in County Extension, like Miss Rogers that was just up here, uh, Travis Seawright. Uh, and Mr. Irvin Shannon, he is here today as well. These folks are all in the Ag Hall of Fame. We've got dairymen in there, and like uh, the Dakin brothers. We've got uh, John Peachy in there, and also Jack Gay. And so we have just a, a, all these different type of commodities. We have a number of nurserymen that are in the Ag Hall of Fame, and that were agricultural so the year in the Reasoners brothers, Egbert and Pliny Reasoner. And then also my former uh, employer, Mr. Walter Preston, who was in the Ag Hall of Fame. And so there are also cattle, cattlemen in there of all kinds from every part of Manatee County and the one I was going to call out. The ones I were going to call out was Henry Parrish of Mayaka City and Jim Strickland uh, from out in the uh, Clay Gully area of Manatee County. So they, all of these folks are in our Ag Hall of Fame and please take time to, uh, to go see them. But they're all different commodities. And so what's unique about Florida is that we have 300 plus commodities grown in the state of Florida. So uh, some are more unique than others. Um, so I say all this because um, uh, the commodity of our recipient for this year, that commodity has not had a champion in the Ag Hall of Fame or as Agriculturalist of the Year. And so I know it's going to find a little, a little bit strange, but this commodity is widely used in the agricultural areas in different pursuits. But it, like I said, it doesn't have a champion until today. 
Today I will have a champion. So I don't want to give it away just yet, okay? <laughs> Not just yet. But uh, there were a record number, from what I've seen and different ones that I've had, got to announce, there was a record number of entries of letters from people and letters of support uh, for our recipient this year. And I just want to give you some of the words that I saw. And some of these were from other agricultural folks, and some were letters from students, which I thought was even more unique. So let me just read some of the words that I saw in some of the letters. Generous, how generous our recipient is and has been and still is. How proficient they are. How caring they are. What hard workers they are in so many ways. So here we go. I can't really go much further without, without. I, I wanted to string it along for like you know, 30 minutes and everything, but we can't do that. So anyway, s several years ago, um, I know that you've all heard some talk about HLB. It's Huang Long Bing disease. That's the citrus greening that is uh, knocking off a lot of our citrus groves, lots of them. Um, that was on a rampage here in Manatee County in our region and all of Florida. And so a lot of our groves were becoming, you know, to, to the point where they, they were just dying. And so there, there wasn't a lot of room uh, for grove care taking going on during this time. And so um, when I said, uh, when I, I made it plural there a second ago, so you know there's two people. Um, so what these two people did was they decided, hey, you know what, uh, we... Uh, we can't, we can't keep going, going this way. We have to come up with something else. So they put their heads together and they started uh, thinking about what other type of commodity they could produce here in the county and make a decent living at it. Well, they did find it. I want to tell you that. Hay has never been a primary commodity uh, with any inductee uh, to the Agricultural Hall of Fame here in Manatee County. So, uh, however, today, that's going to change here in just a second. With more than 3,000 acres of hay uh, being produced here in the county by these two gentlemen, um, they uh, are one of the largest hay producers in the state of Florida right now. And I want to tell you something. The, 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 the companies that produce hay equipment, when they want something tested, they come see Vic and Jimmy Keene. It is. I, I think that is a real, a real testament. When you have huge companies uh, coming to you saying, hey, use our equipment. We want, you, we want you to tell us what you think about it. This is just a prototype. Bring, bring it out. We're going to bring it out. You use it. Tell us what you think. That tells me that they are doing something right. Uh, both Vic and Jimmy have been, uh, they're both born here in Manatee County. They're like their sister, she said earlier, they're seventh generation Floridians. And uh, both Vic and Jimmy have been involved in agriculture since birth. I remember seeing them, my dad worked for Keene Farm and Grove when they were little kids. Um, so they've been involved since birth, working alongside their fa father, Callan, or Buddy Keene, how y'all know him uh, here in the audience. Um, but both are Palmetto High School graduates, both were members of the Palmetto FFA chapter, and both serve on various boards. I get the pleasure to serve with Vic on the Manatee County Farm Bureau Board. Uh, Jimmy has served on the Cattlemen's uh, Board as the president. And I will tell you what was so difficult about it. I ran into Vic a couple, about, it's about a week ago at the convenience store. Man, that was hard not to like, spill the beans, you know? And then the first person I get out of my truck out here, here comes Jimmy walking up to me. And I was talking to David Council, and we're like, okay, we have to stop what we're talking about right now. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let me introduce to you the 2024 Agriculturalist of the Year, Mr. Vic and Jimmy Keene. Thank you. 
much that you got. Oh. So I think they want to take some pictures. So they're all right. Oh, yeah. That's fine. All right. <laughs> I'm the youngest, but I'm the always the one who gets to talk. It seems like, but um, yeah, this is this was a real big surprise because um, I was told it was for uh, for a friend of mine's father. And they told me that a couple weeks ago. I said, well, there's no way in hell you're going to get all them here as a surprise. And uh, so I guess, yeah, you know, growing up in Manti County, me and my brother have um, we've just worked in the, you know, we used to have a we still do. We have a spreading business. We do a lot of work for farms, and we used to do a lot of work for groves. And um, a few years ago, um, you know, it's basically, you know, it's just harder and harder to make a living farming in Manti County. And uh, we kind of found a niche with the hay, and we've been, got some some partners in here, with, like the McClure's. We lease a lot of land from them, and um, uh, been real fortunate and Mr. Preston you know we have hay all the way out at uh, 75th Street and in, uh, in West Brayton and, and, uh, and it works good for uh, utilizing the land and keeping it nice and until they're ready to do whatever else they're going to do with it and uh, it's it's really it's really been a pretty good I mean it, it is a lot of work and it's um it's a lot of seven days a week and it's not for everybody and uh, my kid I see my, so my kids just got here. And, uh, <laughs> they work with us, you know, when they're able to. My son's a junior at the University of Florida, and I do work with David Council, buy chemicals from him. Like, just like, everybody in here I pretty much has a cowboy hat on or something I've done something with in the past, so or still do. So I really appreciate it. This is very unexpected. And, um, Maybe he'll say something. I'll just, I'll just say a few words. It's definitely a surprise and an honor. And uh, like my brother said, it's uh, it's hard work. We love it. Uh, if you if you don't love it, you can't do it because the, the pay is not very good. So, uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to do it without anybody but him because uh, we feed off each other and we push each other, and he's the reason I do it. So, thank y'all. I want, to, I want to thank my dad, my sister, and my wife. My wife especially, she's, you know, keeps all the checks, tried to make them clear with bank and all that, so. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna ask all the family to stay. We want to do some photographs, so nobody leaves. And um, congratulations to our Agriculturalist of the Year. We're very proud of you and your accomplishments and grateful for your contributions to Manatee County Agriculture and, and to this community. Mr. Ellis brought some gifts and right by the door there's a little, little urn that has some four foot yardsticks. So I'm not sure what you call a four foot yardstick, but they're over there. My grandma had one and now I do and I'm really happy with that. Thank you so much. There's not one for everybody, so don't hurt yourself getting there. <laughs> the produce on the table is for you to take, so um, enjoy it. And um, now I'll return control. Thank Detweilers for the produce. Uh, the pro produce was given to us from Detweilers. Thank you. So remember that when you go in the store. And now we'll return control to President Mike. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you very much, Brenda Rogers. Let's give uh, her and her whole committee an ag big round of applause. <clears throat> For our members, we will not have a meeting next week, so have a great Thanksgiving to everyone. We do have a board meeting tomorrow right here at noon, so that's pretty important. We're going to be doing pictures. Mac? Just want to thank everybody for the Salvation Army Adopt an Angel program. We've got a lot of stuff up here. If you're one of the ones who adopted an angel and haven't brought it back in yet, please take it before you leave. Thank you. <laughs>
Neil Unruh, our president two years ago, sees me coming up here with this. No, Neil, I'm not going to do a food fight. It's not even going to start, OK? But anyway, uh, oh, mom called. She said, eat your veggies. All right, so everybody have a great finish to the week. Thank you all for being here. And if some people could stick around and help dismantle some of these tables, that would be a big help. Thank you all. Have a great day.